Good day. You're listening to European Buddha. A warm welcome to everyone. This time we want to introduce you to a new format, five frequently asked questions about Buddhism. So today I have the pleasure of welcoming Sarko Andrijevic again. Hello. Hello, Martin. It's nice to be with you again in the EBU podcast here. So are you ready? Yes, I think I am. <laughs> so, Zako, why meditate? We could say that, uh, you know, mind is wild and uh, restless. You know, our mind is wild and restless. And therefore, it is confused, clouded, you know, not, not, not clear. We believe in our own perception of the world. You know, we believe that what we see, that is how things, how things are. And of course, that's not the truth. You know, we don't see things as they are. But we act in accordance with the way we see things. And therefore, we in that way actually contribute to uh, this general disharmony which exists in the, in the, in the world. So function of meditation is uh, really to bring the mind in its uh, natural state of silence and illumination. What did the Buddha realize mm. or awakened from? I can say that what the Buddha realized is that what he discovered is true nature. When he was liberated, when he experienced enlightenment, what he really discovered is his true nature or the true nature of life or true nature of any phenomena, not just us as a, as a human being. That is very, very unimaginable deep insight into the mystery, mystery of life in, in, in general. And, uh, and he was called Buddha precisely because he was a completely and perfectly awakened, awakened one. And there's another mystery about life. It's uh, death. What happens after we die? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's a question which uh, uh, a lot of people take, take very, uh, to be very important you know, for them. But actually, Buddhism is much more occupied uh, with what is happening before we die than with what is happening after he died. <laughs> so for you personally, uh, what is one of the best teachings that you have received in your life? The best teaching. I think everybody would like to to have a best teaching, you know, because <laughs> why, why would we bother with a, with a you know, teaching which are not the best, you know? <laughs> Therefore, even, even meeting the Buddhism, you know, we are looking for the best school, for the best teachers, for the You know, because we deserve we deserve the best, of course. <laughs> <laughs> And that can be that can be a problem sometimes, you know. <laughs> What I would like to say here is that uh, that you know the teaching in Buddhism is very often presented as a medicine. Uh, and therefore we could say that uh, the best teaching is uh, the teaching which in uh, certain moment correspond precisely with some someone needs and someone ability that in that moment recognize the teaching and apply the teaching. I hope this is not too complex. <laughs> How can Buddhist teachings support uh, human beings in these times and facing The challenges of modern life? It has to be adapted. The teaching has to be adapted uh, to the needs of time. Teaching itself is timeless, of course. You know, but uh, it has to be adapted to the needs uh, of, of, of our time. And, uh, and in order to do that, uh, we have to first, we have to make teaching alive in our own selves, you know, and then, uh, and then we can actually share that teaching 
with the with the others in in a form which is more most appropriate for themselves for the situation in which they live so this is it this was the first trailer of our mini series five frequently asked questions about buddhism starting with Zako Antichevich and we will continue this journey by releasing each question in more detail soon. Before we do that, let's take a moment and ask ourselves why meditate?